versus Chris Puttock. Mm. However, there's a bit of drama going on because Chris Puttock has just been down the pub and had three pints. So he is... <laughs> he, um, he goes like, you're kidding me, I'm on the stream? Um, so I think he, he didn't quite realise that <laughs> There's the potential to be on the stream, and of course he has the right to refuse if he wishes. But he was he was fine with going on, so we're gonna see if um, him Chris Potter with three pints in him can take out the Boomzuki of Adam Wright's list. Um, this is going to be rather interesting, and it could prove to be a reason to say, kids, don't play X Wing and drink. Oh boy, this is going to be interesting. But I also really like the list. It's a scum list. It has another side of interest in it, which is pretty standard, which we have Predator, Lazrazi, a lot of dampeners, and Shadowcaster. Uh, pretty much a side of interest and Lazrazi are married to each other, so that's no surprise there, That uh, since their abilities very combo very well. Zuckus is in there, giving people extra dice. But he's propped up to Particle 9 with Dengar for rerolls, Collision Detected to avoid obstacles, Mist Hunt of the Barrel Rolls, and Tractor Beam to mess with his opponents, which could be the key factor in this list. Then again, he doesn't want to split up his opponent because he wants to boom, have them to boom and blow up near, near each other. The Jakku Gunrunner with Tactician, Pet Analyzer, and Space Tug Tractor Ray is a fascinating thing. So he does, as an action, he can maneuver a ship with a, he can basically assign a tractor beam token. So there's a lot of tractor beams going in this list. And pattern analyzer means that no matter what he does, he gets his action. Because when executing a maneuver, you may um, resolve the check pilot step, uh, uh, check pilot stress step after the perform action step, instead of before that step. So, oh boy. <laughs> Uh, and along with Tactician, it means that provided he can use the Space Truck Tractor Array to get them at range 2, he can then fire at them with his measly 2 attack dice, but it doesn't matter because he's going to stress them out anyway. It seems to be that the whole point of the Jakku Gunrunner is to run interference. It's not meant to be a massive damage dealer or drop bombs. It's there to be annoying. So, going up there, we can see that it's Puttock on the right and Adam has yet to arrive. He'll be on the left side of the screen. In fact, there he is right there with his gorgeously painted Boomzookies. With their red and purple nose cones, their uh, rising sun insignias, and, uh, uh, and appropriately kanji writing on the, the wings as well. His kamikaze squadron, essentially. <laughs> Don't forget, if you're watching this live, you can uh, put a comment in the uh, in this in the chat. I'm more than welcome to answer and reply to the chat. I encourage discussion amongst the chat. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube in the future, you place a comment below, like this video, and subscribe. We produce uh, content for X Wing very regularly, at least once every two weeks, and then a tournament every month. So uh, yes, if you like X Wing, uh, please subscribe to us. And there they are. There are the Boomzookies. I believe the far one there, which has the purple nose, is an Andrew Slack. <coughs> Excuse me.
And there you can see Adam just setting up his entire board full of Z95s. He's going to require all the space necessary for all those cards. Well, both opponents, uh, there's the shake of the hands, and they're about to begin. So I'm really curious how this one's going to go. And Adam just, no care, just going to shove that there for you. And Patek being a bit more analytical with his choice, straight on. Not, and Adam again, just going to put that over there. And again, just shove that there. Yada yada yada. Cool, cool, cool. Here we go. So a very landing strip style of asteroids there. Often you see that, but it's uh, it gets the job done, I guess. So we have a scum versus scum. Uh, build off going on here. We have a Jakku Gunrunner who's now being placed right now. And there he goes. There's the Jakku Gunrunner. Um, he's going for a middle setup here. Interesting. Not sure whether that's uh, him wanting to see where Adam goes and not wanting to be too far away because the, the it's not fast. The quad jumper is not a fast ship. So he's going to have to make sure that wherever Adam goes, he needs to be able to get there sharpish. And there go all the Boom Suki Z95s, Blacks and Soldiers, just meandering at range one in a formation line, uh, which is a bit better than a box. It means that because um, in a box, there's a risk that one might in destroy or hit all four of them. Whereas in a line, at least only two or three others can be hit, which is not as good, but still better than all of them getting hit, is what I'm saying. Okay, right. And uh, then Puddock's also got a Sarge Ventress with him. So Sarge, Sarge Ventress, very popular pilot for the Lancer class, Pursuit Craft. It's very rare that you see anyone else flying that thing. And no surprise that it is the Shadowcaster, so it has officially got the title Shadowcaster. And Zuckus, who is in his ship, the Mist Hunter, 
uh, with uh, Dengar on board rather than to fall on, which is uh, not very f- fluffy, but still bounty hunter and bounty hunter, so I guess that can be excused. Who am I kidding? You play what you want. Uh, but veteran instinct to jump up to pilot skill 9 is significant. And Zuckus has a good ability where he can roll one additional attack dice, but it gives the defender one additional defense dice. But it's always the best thing to do because, uh, essentially, uh, attack dice are favored over defense dice. There is one extra lick of paint on attack dice compared to defense dice. So it literally, most people with Zuckus say, it's worth it. The risk that someone gets an extra evade is worth the fact that it's, it's the higher chances that they're not going to get that extra evade, essentially. Um, hmm. Patek is setting the G1A right next to the Jakku Gunrunner, not allowing space for if they were to perform a turning bank. So if they bank in the same direction and to do the same speed maneuver, they will collide. Not sure if that's the drink impacting performance there, or whether it's simply uh, the way he's doing it, which either which doesn't matter. It's up to him how he does things. And there's another shake of the hands to confirm the game is on. And Adam right down there with the first dial, and same with Puttock. He knows exactly where the shadowcaster is going, but he's working from uh, the, the middle to, to the lowest or the highest, so. I usually tend to try and do the first ship that will move, then the second ship, then the third, to make sure that I don't cause overlaps. And even then, I cause mistakes. So clearly the pilot, the Z-95, that's separate from the rest, up at the top there, that's Nadru Shalak. Uh, his ability is he gains an extra attack dice when there are no other friendly ships at range 1 to 2. And that's, it says attack dice. It doesn't say on a primary weapon attack, it says when attacking. So that counts for secondary weapons. So as I've, we've said before, the iron pulse missiles he has, suddenly four attack dice, providing there's no other friendly ship within range one to four. And that against that shadow caster, that could be devastating. And here comes the Jakku Gunrunner, three forward, I think the fastest maneuver that that thing can do, and his focus token. Hello, Mr. Yules, how's it going? Everything all right? Everything good? Yeah, everything's fine. Cool. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Uh, good band, that yours. Always checking up on things, making sure everything's going fine. So they are Black Sun soldiers. So they're higher than PS One uh, Benair pilots. Not that's going to, and that's going to affect the fact that there's a Jakku gun runner in play. Um, he has the pilot skill advantage there, which I don't think is very common for Adam's list. Um, Adam f- very much uh, flies a lot of low pilot skill ships, um, and it's unusual, I think, to f- I, he's finding himself in a situation where he's firing before someone. Uh, here he goes. Masterful maneuvering there with his ships, all three banks. It's going to cause a problem for the lower one if they're all doing a three bank because they're in line. They're both. They'll be in line with the asteroid, and both will. Only one will be able to turn around to the left. Only and the other one will have to go around the asteroid the other way. But it's something at least. So the true Salak is up there. All these numbers are going to give me a headache. But oh well. We, what we do, what we wouldn't do. For some X Wing. Oh well, there we go. Adam is moving his United Fives into position. It looks like he wants to try and jump the, the Shadow Caster. Um, however, he set himself up for a a dangerous play around the asteroid because he's going to have to be careful. And there's the shadow caster sh- jumping up with a five forward. Kvartek is not playing around. He's aware that if he shoots any of those boomzookies and kills them, they could do splash damage onto their own ships. Uh, and there's a focus token. I don't think it's range uh, range three. I think it's just out uh, for for anyone who would attack. But I don't think attack's going to be happening now. And there's 
Oh, no, true. Surprising maneuver. Um, but I guess it makes sense. He wants to keep them away from his other so 95s to make sure that his ability procs. And it, doing the five forward means, or oh, sorry, the four forward means that he at least uh, has a good position to go around the asteroid next turn. So he's not having to do another forward and then turn. A two turn would might be safe for the asteroid. A three would definitely be safe. Banks, I would be fine, I'd imagine. And nothing... Oh, oh, nope. Nope, no shot at all. Not surprising. <coughs> it's very rare that we have a turn one of firing. Uh, only when we have large base ships involved, and they both do uh, four or five forward maneuvers, do we get anything close to a first round engagement. Adam is very much a casual player. He turns up here for fun. He's not here for any competitive prizes, although it would always be nice. It's always nice to win something. Um, he's been playing. He's been playing for about a year. Uh, he's an, he's an, he's a fairly okay player. Uh, he's not an expert, but he certainly knows his stuff about X-wing. Um, and he comes up with completely off the wall and different lists, which is exactly what we're looking at today. And I actually really appreciate this list. It's uh, something which I've seen him fly several times before, and he always has fun flying it. His Boom Zuki list, which if we have time at the end, I'll certainly get him to bring those through and to show you exactly what they look like, because they are spectacular. Painted by Maverick Miniature Studios, who have been in business for a year now. Congratulations to them. And if you're listening, Toby, we miss you. Next round is going to be crucial because that's when uh, we get into combat range. And the Shadowcaster can start trying to take out those E95s, or those E95s could tr try to target lock and concussion missile that thing off the board. Because all those combined could potentially destroy the Shadowcaster. Potentially. There's always the there's always a possibility. However, at the same time, they've got a range 1 blind spot, so he could rush the blind spot, but then he's facing a 3 attack dice uh, hit from 4 Z95s. Now, of course, that's better than 4 attack dice from 4 Z95s, but um, it's still a matter that it's uh, not what you want. Okay, there we go, Jakku Gunrunner, moving up. He, I don't think he has range for Space Tug Tractor Ray, but he's focusing instead. So here we go. Here comes the, the Z95s. We have, we have a, a two forward. If they're all doing that, then they're all going to end up over that debris field. That's going to cost Adam, because it means that they won't get their missile lock, uh, um, off, because they won't be able to target lock. Um, I hope he remembers that. Of course, if he's done a one forward with the others, he might just be able to fit in behind the debris field and get a target lock that way, um, but he's been pushing it. In fact, he's doing just that, a one forward, which is also means he, they're providing, the, the debris field is providing cover for the Z95, but it does mean he's going through it next round.
measuring range there. And Puttek seems to be dancing, not sure what he's doing there. Maybe some tribal ritual to allow himself to uh, concentrate better on the game. But he's reaching for the five forward. Has he collided with Zenai five number five? He's pushed for the five forward, wanted to get in the range one blind spot. And I think he might just fit there. He might just fit. Uh, 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 uh. Yes, he fits. Cinderella has fit, fitted her shoe right where she needs to be inside the, the glass slipper. And unfortunately, those glass slippers are about probably to be destroyed as number five is not going to be alive much longer. <laughs> Because, yeah, although five does get a range one, I think every one of those does get a range one attack upon the Shadowcaster. And if the Shadowcaster does attack anything other than, than two and destroys anything other than two, it means that uh, there will be a dead man switch occur on to the onto anything within range one, which will affect Adam's entire list. Uh, but does he want the Shadowcaster? And I'm just straightening it up. Do she like there? Yeah. Range three, and a target lock. Predator. Now forget that, that's what uh, uh, Sarge Ventress has. So she already has good quality on her dice. She has two rerolls, uh, which that's important. She's got two rerolls because these are pilot skill three, not two. Uh, Shadowcaster. He's stressing four. Because he wants four. Because four's the only one who next round could probably get a shot on him with the missiles. So, yes. I can see what he's doing there. All right, here comes uh, Zuckus into number two. He's gaining an extra dice because why not? And hits blank, blank, focus. And then Garner gives you one reroll because it's, um, yeah, it's not a named pilot. So, boom, spend a focus. That's three hits on Zenite 5 number two. Uh, evade, yeah, just one evade. So that's two hits on Z95 number two. So the shields are down. Ding ding. And this is where the United Fives get their comeback. I think it's Nadrew, and it's a hit. Focus, focus. He's got no focus, but he has got a target lock. Is he going to spend the target lock? It's the point where he wishes he had focus, I imagine. Um, he spends the target lock. He gets another hit out of it, which that's worth it. It's worth it for that extra hit. Here we go. Uh, and a blank out on the Jakku Gunrunner, who takes all of both hits. Uh, so although it's not going to get destroyed, that significantly impacted that ship there. He's attacking two because he realizes that if he destroys... Uh, if Joyce destroys the wrong one, he is going to take a nasty amount of missiles. Uh, so, sorry, the uh, procking of the uh, uh, Dead Man Switch. Fo a hit, crit, focus. 
And he wants to try and kill number two, and that will kill number two. In fact, number two's got to roll perfectly to survive unless he gets um, direct hit. And unfortunately, he does not roll perfectly. So number two takes uh, the remaining two damage and dies, and then exp uh, then does multiple damages to ships around him. So three and four will take a damage as well. So already, the the actual um, Deadman Switch has worked against Adam in this instance. Hmm, such a shame. Such promise. And I think that might be close to number five as well. No, it's not. But regardless, number four and three and four have taken a damage. So let me approve this overlay and quickly move it across before they do another attack. There we go. Ooh, hit, hit, crit. Actually, on the, uh, I think that's from Xenite Fight number four. And there's an evade spoken there, but no stress. Oh, spend the focus. You have to spend the focus. Oh, it's a focus. Oh, okay. So the shadow caster has to remove uh, all but one of its shields. That's not the exchange that uh, Puttock wanted. He kind of wanted to make sure that uh, he kept his shields for as long as possible. And while he still has one left over, he's got another Zenite 5 who... And that's a hit and a two focus results. Oh, no. Uh, no, it is two focus. So, yeah. And there's nothing there. So, it's another shield off the Shadowcaster. So, shadow Oh, no, he's spending the foc the uh, stress token to evade that We're using Lats Razi. Another two points. Very powerful ability, especially combined with um, a size of interest. Mm. Okay. Okay, now. So here we go. Number five into the side of the Shadowcaster. Hit, hit. Uh, no, hit, double focus. Spend the target lock to reroll the focus results, most likely. Uh, yes, he's opting to do just that. Rerolling the focus results. Uh, one hit, sorry, two, yeah, two hits there, and focus, evade, the shadow cast removes its remaining shield and takes a damage card. If only Nadru was closer at this point so he could fire his iron pulse missiles, the shadow caster would not like to do a one forward next turn, uh, because then it, it, uh, it's going to make that hard turn very tight for it next turn. Here comes the Jakku Gunrunner with... Uh, an attack at range two. Uh, he's using tactician, so number three is being stressed. So another stressing thing going on here. It seems that uh, Puttock's build is about dealing stress and stressing you out and getting rerolls. Uh, double hit there. Uh, I'm not sure how we get two. Oh, it, it is a, it is a two, two, two attack dice ship. Of course it is. So two attack dice versus the Z95's um, two defense dice. Let's see how that goes. <clears throat> so Adam is already down on points now and there's the defense roll to evade he's fine uh, that was very lucky of Adam there if he had lost it he could have been in a very dire situation so with one boom zuki down we're looking at a total of uh, 81 points on Adam's side of the board versus Puttuk's 100 points now the Jakku Gunrunner is hurting. The problem is those United Fires are going to go over a debris field and gain stress. I think the best thing for them to do is simply to, uh, well, uh, what could they do? Because they move first. They could aim to block, but I don't think there's much they can do because the Shadow Cast is in the way. Uh, if they could move there, it'd be fantastic, but they can't. Probably the best thing for them to do is turn, up, turn off and block or engage Zuckus and the Jakku Gunrunner. Especially with Nadrew, that's who's coming in. Nadrew could... Wipe out the Jakku Gunrunner on the next turn. If he rolls uh, three hits and the Jakku Gunrunner blanks out like he did last time, uh, that could remove that from play. Combining two Z95s uh, makes it likely that thing's not going to survive, and that at least gives you some points, even if you're going to lose. Um, but he needs to start doing consistent damage and a lot more damage as things go on. Chat, what do you think of this match that's going on right now? 
And any picks for any future matches? Any people, anything you'd like to see in particular? If we have them wandering around the boards outside at all? Uh, any, I don't, we don't have any punishers. Uh, we've seen a few, uh, we've seen a few protectorates. We've got old, old, old Fenru, which is, um, uh, an iteration of, um, a tiny mind link build that we've seen many, 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 many times. Um, yeah, it's going to be fascinating. But yeah, if there's anything in particular you guys want to see, let me know and we'll get them in. We might be joined by David Lincoln for the third, uh, for the fourth and final round. Depends what he fe how he feels like um, and how well he does. Um, hopefully his game's going very well. Okay. Now Drew was way too far from the initial starting point and the Z95s, they didn't have the proper first round. They... They expected to. They didn't slow roll it. If they slow rolled it, then they could have probably got caught the Shadowcaster in the second round. Um, but unfortunately, Puttock, uh, the pilot skill advantage just didn't work for them. Uh, so maybe, maybe Dan was uh, sorry, Dan. David was right during the uh, the interview last session of using Nadru to give you the target locks uh, for the future. Um, but we'll see. Okay. Uh, Adam's just checking his dial there, making sure everything's all fun and dandy. Uh, Patek is not set his dials. I think he's still wondering where the hell he's going to go. Uh, the Shadowcaster's probably a good choice just to turn uh, three or two uh, to the right and uh, uh, skirt around the edge of the board, because that's what the Shadowcaster likes to do. Uh, while Zuckus and the Jakku Gunrunners, they've got a choice. They can either turn to engage Nadru, or they can continue to engage the Z95s. Either way, they're being flanked. And if they end up near a Z95 that's blowing up, they will take auto damage because of uh, uh, the uh, dead man switch. Right. Some discussion going on here. I think it's about uh, how things move. And... Let's have a look at this. Who have we got in the chat right now? Say hello to our lovely, lovely viewers. Hello, E. Darrow Smith, uh, Grumpy Ethan, uh, Kang, uh, Kankiskin, Kankiskin, uh, Kazfanatu, Lager 50, Lithony 2017, PG Boroten, uh, Thalan Ree, and the Juice 84. Thank you for all joining us today at Athena Games for our X Wing. Mayday tournament. I'm Elliot Baker. I'm alone here in the booth. It feels very weird to be alone. Usually I have David Lincoln right here next to me giving commentary or Max Bull or someone else. But right now they're all out there having fun. <laughs> they're all playing. No one wanted to give up their, um, their playing to sit in this, the, the chair next to me today. Uh, but that's a fine. I'm, I'm, I, the show must go on. I'm not, pre I'm not prepared to give up on uh, this stream even though it's uh, only one person. All right then, so where, what do we all think is going to happen here? I personally think Chris has got this one. Uh, he's got good damage output, whereas Adam's going to struggle to get um, convergence on and con converge arcs on anything the next round, especially with the Z95 throwing number stressed, so he can't K-turn over the debris field, and four, while it can K-turn, will be blocked most likely by the Shadowcaster. Five is in a terrible position, a K-turn would be pushing the board edge, I would have thought. Um, but it's definitely possible. Of course, he could turn and try and block the Shadowcaster, but it's unlikely to block anything because the Shadowcaster probably wants to turn. Um, the Drew is way too far away from the engagement, although being far away has meant that he can come in for... A, he, it's forcing Puttick to decide whether he wants to turn the Jakku Gunrunner to engage Nadrew or whether he wants to turn to engage um, the others because the Jakku Gunrunner can use his action to move Nadrew and Nadrew is smack bang next to an asteroid. And that's what I think is the key thing here is he he's wondering, can I get range two to make sure I can get a tractor on, a, on that thing? Uh, which, although Madru would then move off the asteroid, it might mess up Adam's manoeuvring enough uh, that he doesn't get shot on the Jakku Gunrunner. Because Nadru single-handedly could kill the Jakku Gunrunner with a whiff. Speaking of the Jakku Gunrunner, oh, he's Patek's rethinking. He definitely doesn't know where he wants that to go. And I think he's putting it down for the final time. Is he committed? Is he absolutely sure where he's going to go? 
he's, again, he's, oh, now he's deciding whether he wants Zuckers to go there. Those three pints must be severely affecting him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Puttock, for the lovely display there. I completely agree. Uh, Nadru up there at Zenith Fire Number 1, I think Space Drug Tractor will help the fact that it can't fire at that. Uh, but don't forget that it will move after the tractor from the Space Drug Tractor array. So, if Adams predicted that and started a bank, or, or one forward, then it's fine. But if, if he's done a three forward, he might move from one asteroid onto another. Okay, where's this thing going? He's looking for his template. He's found his template. It's a one heart. He's turning to engage to Drew. And this is where the space truck tractor array will come into play. Can Does he have range? Because the space truck tractor array is at, uh, any ship at range one. Yeah, so he, he's not got range. Yeah. He can't fire it. He has to be within range one. So he can't do it this turn. But I'm not sure. With that information, I'm not sure it's wise, because he he has to maneuver. Now, that being said, Zuckus could be turning to engage as well, and also be firing the tractor beam at uh, the Drew, in preparation for the future. So, let's see how things progress. Uh, Z95, interesting maneuver by Adam. Not sure where what he's thinking. Um, maybe he's thinking that Zuckus is going to turn down there, although I don't think that's where Zuckus is going to go. Um, but who knows? I could be wrong. He's taking a target lock on the Shadowcaster. A mistake, because I don't think the Shadowcaster is going to be there this round. Um, but yeah, so let's move number five. Uh, okay, it's going over the debris field, so it's a two bank which clears its stress, but then it gains it back again by going over there. That's definitely a block on Zuckers if, blocks is, if Zuckers is turning left. But again, I'm not sure that that's what Zuckers is doing. And there's the stress that's reapplied because of going over the debris field. He does roll for damage. C953 rolls for damage. Does he get anything? Do we see paint? We see a crit. The Z95 number 3 takes a critical hit. A shield, is, the, the remaining shield is taken off Z95 number 3. Boom. Which, that's not really, he, really what he wants. I mean, if if he blew up at that point, it'd be great, because then it'd do damage to the Shadowcaster, but I don't think he'd want to lose a ship for that. Speaking of Shadowcaster, we might have a bump here. Yes, uh, that's not going to clear it, Adam. Corner to corner, it's not going to clear that. He's doing corner to corner to see whether it clears. Ah, all right, he's snookering, he's snookering, and we're not winning, because that won't hit there, so it won't, it won't go there, Adam. It won't go there. There's no point putting it there because of the way the, the, the edge, edges work. So you gain a stress, you gain another stress because you've gone over the debris field, and you've landed on it, and you're also touching the shadow caster. Um, and you're on the debris field as well, so it's, a, it's the most... It's the... I would not have done that maneuver. It severely hurt him uh, as a that Z95 is sent, probably going to get destroyed this round because and if it, even if it doesn't, it's going to have a hard time getting back into the engagement zone. And there's Puttuck moving along on the debris field, taking a taking it down a peg. Um, there we go, slotting it very neatly just there. And that looks about where it was. Um, so yeah, not been a good turn for Adam. Now Drew is the star of the game here. If he can take out the Juku Gunrunner, then Adam at least gains something. I think they're having a discussion of where the Z95 was and where it would end up. There. That's where it would end up, end up. Right there. Boom. Great, guys. Now, can we move on? <laughs> Still, diligence is the key. Um, 
that's the problem is that uh, he didn't consider the sh he either forgot the Shadowcaster was still going to be there when he moved, or he thought he could clear it. Which um, even I looking at the push and there's a hit. Nothing happens because it's just a hit, so it's fine. Oh no, it is a crit. Ooh, ooh. Hmm. That's 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 big. <laughs> So let's uh, let's remove that shield. Adam's not having good luck with asteroids, which is pretty much uh, how it works with him. He's not usually very good with asteroids. He um, he tends to forget the um, uh, the relative maneuver and the, uh, you know the the way the it's sometimes for new players or even for experienced players it can hard be hard to wrap your head around the actual templates and their proportions. Um, you know, we all know that the straights are equal to the base lengths. Uh, so a one, bit, uh, a speed one is the same uh, length as um, a base width. Um, speaking of, there's a f oh, okay, okay. This actually could be um, the Jakku Gunrunner dying because that's a range one shot on the Jakku Gunrunner. Uh, the difference is if Zuckus is turning. If Zuckus is turning then Zuckus can track to beam poor old Nadru onto that asteroid. And that would be seriously bad. And in fact, exactly what's happening. I think it would have been... It, it was a mistake doing that. I think Adam should have gone forward at, at a slower speed to make sure that he was nowhere near that asteroid. Because now Zuckus is going to fire his tractor beam and is going to track to that pausey 95 onto an asteroid... And so that thing is not going to get to attack. But he's popping Glitter Stim to make sure that on defense and attack, he may get evade results. That's not a bad call, actually. If he gets the evade to stay where he is, then he gets his attack to go off anyway. It also means, however, of course, it, um, there's also the chance that he could fail. Asajj Ventress. Assigning a stress token to a ship. As assigning it to... Hmm... Is it range three? One to two. Aha, I have to go sort that out. Give me a second, guys. Nope, my mistake. I just remembered it's for the glitter stim. I'm thinking entirely different. So he's measuring for five to see whether uh, a size of interest can give a stress token number five. And it, he can. He's giving it to number five. Not about arc. Well, it's about arc, but I think it's perfectly fine. Adam, put the uh, the stress on there, maestro. For uh, thirty-four minutes left in this game, it's not looking too good for Adam. He's still behind. This has been a very slow game. Not surprising, since uh, one of the players has been drinking, and the other player is uh, uh, not as experienced with the game, shall we say? Um, so here we go. Uh, tractor beam. Upside down, Puttock, but okay. Um, <laughs> better than nothing. So it's a three dice attack, which Zuckus is going to make a four dice attack versus the Z95's three defense. And Zuckus has no target locks, only a focus result to modify. But with that, that's all you need, a focus result. And he's got Dengar so he can reroll blanks. So, yep, well done. It's going to be... That's going to be an, a tractor beam Z95. Yep, that's a tractor beam Z95. Which means Nadru is not going to get a chance to shoot, which sucks. You know, yeah. This is why I hate tractor beams. But uh, it is what it is. No point even rolling at him, you can't avoid it. <laughs> Oh well. Of course, right onto the asteroid. But donka donk. Unfortunately, yes. I mean, it was wise because I think that there was a chance that he could have avoided it. The problem is the Dengar reroll. If there wasn't that Dengar reroll, he could have actually he would have actually avoided that. Um, yeah. Um, 
Again, this is why I hate tractor beams. The fact that they can deny you the attack because of that. And people say, just avoid flying through asteroids. Yeah, great. Avoid asteroids, which are a big factor of the game. <laughs> um, but that's just me. Um, yeah. Sucks. Really does suck. I had to hold my breath there for a second. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, and Nadru is also stressed, which is even worse, because now he has to go for the asteroid while clearing stress to avoid that. And he's got less defense dice, although he gains one because he's an asteroid now. Um, mm. I might throw Caution of the Wind in just a uh, two-hard tur turn in front of the Shadowcast next turn. Say, well, if you're going to be... Mm, if you're going to do that to me, I'm going to block you. And there's the United 5, number one, blowing up. Which caused damages to all the other United 5s. Well done, Adam. Yeah, that's in. I think that's quite clearly in. Thing is, is it four? I think it's four that blew up. So that means the Shadowcaster is taking a damage as well. But <laughs> one damage on the Shadowcaster. What's that going to do? So five takes damage, which removes one shield. And three takes the damage, which uh, takes it down to one hull. And four gets blown up. Although I'm not seeing it removed from place. The, and there's discussion going on right now. So I'm not sure what's going on. Hmm. Yeah, okay. So they're just clearing up the uh, what happened. So yeah, uh, that should be what happened. Then uh, where is four? Why is four not being removed? Hmm. Ah, there we go. Removing the target lock, and then removing number four, I imagine. I have no idea what's going on at the table right now. I don't have any audio interface, so I can't f hear what they're discussing. Um, but it's going to be curious just to know what they're talking about. I'm going to go and find out what's going on.
So this was the discussion. Uh, this was the discussion, guys. Uh, Z95-4 was destroyed, but uh, Asajj caused an attack, which means she could assign a, fo a tractor token to move the ship. But that's after the attack. So does the ship get destroyed first, or does he get to move it first? Now, according to the rules, which you looked up, apparently it... Um, excuse me. It, uh, the ship is destroyed first, then any after-attacking effects are done. So... The ship did just get destroyed, and it did do a damage to the Shadowcaster. So yeah, there was a very unusual rules interaction going on there, which is why it took so long, because um, they informed the Marshal, which is Chris Chris, uh, Chris uh, Yules, who's out there right now, uh, and uh, that's why they're taking so long. But yeah. Which I have to admit, uh, I wouldn't have known, uh, and it was Chris who found the ruling on that. Uh, because, of course, all after-attacking effects are result after applying the damage, which means the ship is then destroyed. So unless... The, I mean, if the Z95 was a pilot skill 6, the same as a Sarge, then it's different, because um, it's... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Maybe they've realised it's the difference. It's different than that. Effects from attacking is step 8. So even, and I think they have realised that even if that were to occur, he would do it that way, so he didn't get, because he wanted to avoid damage going to Zuckus. So, because um, if he barrel him the other way, it would have hit Zuckus instead of the Shadowcaster, and I think he wanted the Shadowcaster to tank the damage. Hello. It's alright. Is, is ability with, ta uh, with the target lock, with the tracks beam triggers first, and then the ship is destroyed? How do you know that? Uh, flow chart. Flow chart. Because it says here that assigning damage is step seven, effects from attacking is step eight, according to someone. Yeah, but um, it's the um, yeah, yeah. Shadowcaster. The... After you form an attack that hits, that yeah. hits. No, it's it's when it's when dead man switch triggers. Dead man ships is when you are destroyed, and you're destroyed on step ten, which is after the triggered abilities. Okay, all right. So it was the yeah. tractor beam than that because yeah, of the way it works. All right. Thank you, Mr. Yules. Marshall doing his job there, folks. Um, that's one I think they need to put clearly in the FAQ. Um, yeah. <sighs> All right. Because it's weird, because don't forget that PJ, it's the wording, because it says, after you perform an attack that hits, so it's not after attacking, it's in a weird kind of way. It's after you perform an attack that hits. Um, mm, it's, it's, it's a weird one. Yeah. Right. Right, on with the show. <laughs> on with the show. Adam is in an awful position where he can he has to turn five and three into the engagement. Three is stressed, five is stressed. Um, so they're not going to be able to get their actions, meaning they're not going to fire their concussion missiles, which is exactly what Puttock wants. Um, the Drew is not going to be able to f do anything next round because he's going to go over an asteroid, which means he'll be vulnerable and most likely going to be destroyed next round by the Shadowcaster. Um, yeah. Pretty much Chris Puttock's game. Uh, bloody asteroids, bloody tractor beams. Uh, yeah. Weird inter rules interaction now. Thank you for the input, though, PJ. I appreciate it. It's always nice to get a third opinion, as it were, because, um, you know, the rules in FAQ are so extensive, the FAQ is so extensive that not everyone can know everything regarding the game. Um, and sometimes those steps can be... Uh, it can be kind of hard to wrap your head around at times. All right, so here comes the Jakku Gunrunner for the next round. And it's doing a three bank because it realizes it wants to get away from what's going on right now. Well, actually, it's a sloop. Interesting. Uh, probably hoping to get Nadru, but Nadru is a range one thing for the tractor beam, so not today, sucker. Pattern analyzer, form an action before it gets stress token. 
And it's going to get a focus result. Uh, a focus token. And then get the stress token. Which probably means Zuckus is going to K turn as well. Uh, so you're not fine number three. It's probably going to do a three. Uh, ooh, a three bank. A two bank. Yeah, it, it's a weird one. It is a very unusual one. It's, it's the weird rules interaction. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Such a maneuverable ship, the Shadowcaster. Very quick and nippy. I can see this going to a 100 nil victory. Um, and if it doesn't go to time, I should say. Um, Patek has more experience. He's making the right choices. Adam's making the wrong maneuver choices. Ah... Uh, Rookie mistake. Rookie mistake. You knew that Zuckus was there and was not going to move. That's true. Asajj is on half points. Good point there. Uh, she is actually bang on half points. So he is actually going to get something for that. So at least he walks away with something. Speaking of, the other... Uh, Black Sun Soldier dying has brought Adam's list down to a measly 62 points. And Chris Pottick's list, losing half points to the Shadowcaster, is not much. That's uh, 23 points. Yeah, 77 points. Uh, so, Patak is still very much in the lead. Yeah, um, I'll be honest, I've not really had a... Um, uh, I'm always... I like to think that I try and try different things. The problem is um, I tend to stick with Rebels because I know Rebels very well, even though I have li literally one of everything. Um, if you see if you see my case, I've got a lot of X-Wing. Um, and I take it all with me. So I take every single faction with me so I can um, play whatever I fancy that day. Um, but I've not tried... I've never played a, a Jump Master. I'll be I'm, it's because I never got a chance to play it when it came out on the day. And then everyone was using Contractor Scouts, and it sincerely put me off actually playing one, because it's like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to be part of the problem. I'm not going to run that. Um, yeah. Uh, so that put me off playing. I've never flown a Jumpmaster because it has put, because they put me off so much. They, yeah, they, they nearly got me to leave this game because it was so obnoxious as a list. Um... But, yeah, that was back then. At least that problem was fixed to a degree. Um, the Shadowcaster I've always been curious about. I've flown it once. I have flown it once. And it was a Sarge Ventress. And it was a Sarge Ventress with 
Uh, funny enough, it was um, Fenrau and um, Old Terok, but that wasn't a tiny mind link. It was something else. It was, the, it was. Hmm, I think it was push the limit Fenrau and that. That was before tiny mind link was even considered a thing. Um, back when people thought it was a terrible card. Um, yeah, uh, I'd really like to give it another try. Uh, I also want to make Ketsu Annual work. You know, I want to make. I I like the fact they have alt art cards, but they never seem to do it. For the they only do the movie pilots, which makes sense, or the pilots that don't seem to get a lot of play, which is nice because it encourages them to people to play them. But yeah, I mean Ketsu on you, that is a beautiful art card. But um, I want to try and make her work before I actually um, play. It's not that. They're unbeatable at Fallen Ray. It was the extent that they were so prolific. That's what put me off. Uh, the fact that they were... They were very powerful with what they did. Um, although they, they weren't unbeatable. Um, but also, as someone like me... Um, who, uh, was in, who's been in this booth doing commentary for a, you know, nearly, nearly two years now... I used to sit back at Thompson and like... Oh look, another jump master, triple jump master list versus... What a surprise! Triple Jump Master! This is going to be a thrilling game! And we saw a lot of that, and I just got so utterly tired of it. I got frustrated to no end of it, as as someone on the app looking in at the game, as it were. Because I, I'm not competitive, I keep my thumb, my, my finger on the pulse, and I'm aware of the competitive meta, because I have to be, because of this my job, but... I don't play in tournaments. I don't like um, the tournament set the tournament settings. I'm just not comfortable with that. I, I become too competitive, and I don't like the, the how I become when I do, when that happens. So I prefer to step aside and not engage with it. Um, yeah, um, the quad jumper. I'm interested to give that a try. Again, I've not tried the. I, I've rarely flown scum. I've flown a lot of imperial. I've flown a lot of rebel. I've not really flown any scum. Um, Although I'm looking forward to the six. I really am looking forward to those. And I'm looking forward to when we do an epic tournament. That's going to be nice. Oh yeah, trip jumps are much more fun these days. However, it's still three of the same ship, which are all large based and turrets and things and it's like eh turrets are I don't mind turrets but it's like well I kind of want a little bit of variation in lists you know um yeah uh meh I mean um I mean the a, a great example of a fantastic list that I look at and just kind of look at in awe is um Robin Farnden's list which maybe we'll have up next I I do think it's a good list and that's because everyone said the SF was uh, DOA, dead on arrival. Everyone said it was a terrible ship, wasn't going to be any good, and absolutely terrible. It's got a terrible stats. Hello. Hi. Uh, so um, Assad shot at Nadru, and I don't know how many um, hits he actually took. I mean, it was three three hits from Nadru, uh, three hits from Assad, but we don't know how many um, shields and whatnot should be taken off Nadru because they didn't take it off. Oh, what the Holland shield? Yeah. Um. Well, I've. I didn't see any damage go through to Nadru either. As far as I'm aware, he didn't roll for damage on the asteroids. We well, did, but... Um, so the, so they got two of A's, have they, right there, right now? I have no idea. I don't know when this happened. Well, uh, I think we just come to a conclusion there. They were looking at it. Um, that's on the players' side of things, then. Mm -hmm, okay. um, there's not much we can do about that. They should be keeping track of things. Cool. Thank you. So it seems the players have actually lost track of damage on a ship. You know, I only can I'm only got the information that I have on displaying on the board here, um, and as far as I'm aware, the only shot that's, that was taken on the Drew was when it was tracked onto the asteroid. And I don't think it took a damage for that. So I, and I don't know if it took a damage going through the next time, but it. You know, they should be keeping it under. Ah, they just ruled that it's destroyed. There we go. Simple to the point.
Like, I'm not saying that turrets are bad. I like flying turrets. I love flying the Falcon. I love to fly the Falcon. I absolutely adore the Falcon. Um, it's just, uh, I don't think, I don't, I don't get the argument that a turret is any less skill. Um, I think you have a much more biggest, you have a better safety net, but I think that it, flying turrets does require a bit more skill. Um, my problem again is it's three of the same ship outfitted exactly the same, doing the same thing, which is fine if it's small ships and interesting, like four bamzuki boomzukis. But when it's triple jumps, that generally is like, oh, I can shoot you anywhere I go, I don't care, I can barrel, I can block, I do whatever. It's like, eh. Yeah. Uh, I remember people, I mean, to be fair, turrets were a problem back in the day. Um, they, you know, blatantly they were a problem. Um, but, you know, um, it's the old argument of um, how far do you take it? And I don't have a problem flying turrets. I tend to try and keep the one. Um, Unless it's like a turret upgrade ship, which case I kind of put whatever upgrade it is on there that I need. Um, I try and avoid TLT because, well, if, if there's one TLT, it's fine. But if it's multiple, then it's a different story. Another tractor coming in here. Patek landing that C-95 number three on the asteroid. But it looks like it's going to be fine when trying to get off it. But it's destroyed anyway because, yo ho, dead man switch, and asteroid, and tractor, but no nowhere near range one of either ship. So destroyed, boom, and this pretty much calls it because look, it's one Z ninety five who is injured versus, blah, all of that, um, yeah, not gonna that that's not gonna last. It's gonna it's gonna move forward and then die. But it could take the poor Jakku's son runner with it. Uh, but of course, that depends. Oh, but he's right next to an asteroid. And here comes Zuckus, who's going to yo-ho, place you on an asteroid. Because Zuckus, I have tractor beam. And I think tractor beam and not shooting is fun. Uh... God, I hate tractor beam. Shadowcast is going out of the engagement zone. Ten minutes left on the clock, so the game's lasted quite a while. Um, which is not surprising, given that it's essentially a Z95 swarm with some shenanigans involved. A one bank. Curious. Probably want, uh, hedging the bets of where the Z95 was going to be. Interesting. I've just realised there's a target lock on Zuckus. So if anything, the the Z95 could actually fire its missiles at Zuckus. Don't add them. Um, don't fire the Z95 missiles at, at Zuckus. Fire them at um, the, uh, the 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 fire your prime weapon at the Jakku gun runner and try and kill that. Um, those missiles aren't going to do anything to Zuckus. To be fair, you won't probably won't get an attack anyway. If I'm completely honest, but. Um, Zuckus reroll because obnoxious and focus up. Tractor onto asteroid can't fire anyway. Boom, died dead, gone a game over. How fun! Gonna remove the five because there's no point in me saying this is number five. It's the only G95 remaining. I think you can pretty much identify that. One hit. That's one shield removed from Blackson Soldier. With two dice remaining, Jakku Gunner gets a shot on him, as does, uh, which probably might actually kill him. Whee! Isn't this fun? 
Isn't this absolutely fun? Two hits. Okay. And uh, one of eight. Oh, I agree, it can be completely useless, but uh, the extent we're seeing it um, being used today is, yeah, something I'm not a fan of. That's just me. To be fair, it's a fair point, Adam can fly to avoid the asteroids, even though that's not easy because you have to allow two, you essentially have to allow a three straight, is it three straight? Or is it two forward? Because you have to remember that you can shove half a base length forward or half a base length back. So you have to allow for that. And when you consider that essentially as range 1, it's very difficult if the asteroids are tight to avoid that. And here we come to block the... Uh block the Z95. Oh, if Puttuk blocks the Z95 and then tracks the Z95 back onto the asteroid, I'm gonna be uh, peeved. To be fair though, that Blackstone Soldier can't survive another hit, so you might as well just go for the primary. Where's Adam going? One oh, right in front of the... <laughs> oh, okay, it's a one forward, so it has blocked. I thought it was a one bank there that he was going for. Well, actually, it could die in right now because it has to roll a dice because it's going over the, the asteroid. And, and, and Adam, and... Woo for negative play experience! 